In this video, we are going to cover what layer two scaling solutions are, how to use them, and also how to invest in them. And if at any point in this video, you find value, make sure to hit that like button. It really, really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's get into the content. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. Before understanding why someone would use a layer two solution or why they would invest in it, we have to first understand why it's even needed in the first place. And I'm sure by now, many of you know that Ethereum gas fees are so high, 50, 100, 200, $300 or more to make a transaction. And because of this issue, many people have been working on layer two scaling solutions to fix the problem. I want to clarify something. Often when we speak about these high fees and layer two solutions, we focus on Ethereum. And the reason it's on Ethereum is because right now there's a lot of congestion in Ethereum, everyone wants to use it. But we will see layer two scaling solutions for other blockchains in the future. For example, Cardano, or even something like Avalanche. Even recently, we saw that Avalanche had very high fees. So this isn't a problem that is specific to Ethereum, but it is specific to Ethereum at this moment. So because of these high fees, people are working on these solutions. And why are the fees so high in the first place? Well, when we look at Ethereum, there simply isn't enough room for everyone's transactions. So over here, this is my version, my artistic version of a blockchain. Or we can even compare this to maybe an actual train. Let's say you want to go somewhere on a train and every car is filled up or each block is filled up. And now there's another block leaving or another train cart that is opened, except there's not enough room. So if you want to go on and I want to go on, we have to outbid each other, except when it comes to the blockchain, it's not just you and me. It is thousands and thousands of people trying to get into the next block or into the next train. And because of this, we enter into these bidding wars. There's not enough room. So if you want to go, you have to pay more than me. And that's how we get these fees of $100, $200, $300 or even more. And with this, we have seen in the past layer two scaling solutions trying to fix this. One that you might know about is Polygon. However, Polygon isn't really a true layer two scaling solution. Polygon is known as a side chain as opposed to a true layer two scaling solution that is built on top, in this case of Ethereum, and inherits the security of the base chain, in this case, Ethereum. And when it comes to layer two scaling solutions on Ethereum, the most popular method is done through rollups. And with rollups, transactions are executed outside of layer one. So it happens on layer two and then data or proof of transactions is on layer one. For example, let's go back to my fancy artboard. Here we have layer one, but like we said, there's just not enough room. So with layer two, we have these transactions happening outside of layer one, right? So it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be faster. And then after it will be posted on to layer one. A way I like to put it that I think is very understandable is let's say you have a coffee shop and every time someone pays for a coffee, you close the store, you walk to the bank and you deposit. It's just not sustainable, right? You can maybe service one or two customers per hour, but instead the layer two version of that would be instead of going to the bank every time someone pays for a coffee, you just put that money in a cash register and then at the end of the day, you take that money and you go to the bank and you deposit that. So hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that was easier to understand. And when it comes to Ethereum layer two and rollups, the two main types of rollups are optimistic rollups and zero knowledge rollups. So let me show you an example of an optimistic rollup using optimism, which I will leave a link for down below. So whenever using these layer two scaling solutions, the first step is to take Ethereum and bridge it into the version of Ethereum for that protocol, in this case, optimistic Ethereum. So let's say we go over here and we connect our wallet to this protocol and I want to deposit Ethereum into optimistic Ethereum. You will notice at first there are some downsides. For example, it says, please note a week long challenge period is required for withdrawals and the fee to claim them is about currently 274 based on current gas costs. Because when you are bridging in or you are bridging out of these protocols, you are on the Ethereum main net. So the whole goal here is that we want to use these protocols because we want it to be fast and cheap, which it is once you're inside. But getting there in the first place, bridging will have these high fees. And then as you can see in this case, when you want to withdraw, you'll have those Ethereum fees. And also in this case, 
there will be a delay for withdrawals. So let's say in this case, you actually go ahead and you deposit. And the funny part here is I just put 0.01 Ethereum, which is $46, but you're going to see that it could be a lot more just because of gas. For example, the fee right now is $76. So this definitely could be very costly when you are using it. But let's say you actually go ahead and you do deposit into these protocols, then what can you do with it? Well, the goal is to end up doing what we would do on the regular Ethereum mainnet. For example, let's say I go to Uniswap and I connect my wallet. Right now I'm on the Ethereum mainnet. But if I select this option and go to Optimism, it will switch networks for me. And then here I am on Optimism and I can swap Ethereum for other tokens on Optimism. It will be faster and it will be cheaper. Another layer two scaling solution is Arbitrum. And over here, same thing. We would bridge Ethereum for Arbitrum Ethereum. I will leave a link for this down below as well, bridge.arbitrum.io. And something that I want you guys to know about these networks, if you're ever confused looking for them, is that when you're in your MetaMask wallet, just make sure that you're on the right network, right? You might connect to these sites and it's not connecting or it's not working. You just have to go up top and change the network. For example, over here, I can choose between Ethereum mainnet, Optimism, Arbitrum, and Binance Smart Chain, and Matic, and these other networks. So over here with Arbitrum, same thing, right? This is the bad part. When you bridge over, it will cost money, right? For example, let's say we just want to put 0.01 Ethereum and deposit. Let's see what it says. First off, it says it will take 10 minutes for you to see your balance credited on L2, and then moving your funds back to L1 could take about one week, right? So we can see that there are delays going in, there are delays going out, and also there are these high fees when we are going in and going out. And at this point, I already know what you guys are thinking, what's the point of this? And yes, this is definitely the downside of these layer twos. So when these are up and running, right, and more people are using them, it will make sense to bridge a larger amount of Ethereum if you're actually going to use the ecosystem, right? So to bridge just about $100 over doesn't really make sense now. But if someone wants to bridge over $1,000, $5,000 or even more because they actually want to use the ecosystems, then maybe it's not as bad. And at this point, you're wondering, okay, well, how do I invest in it, right? That's the name of this video. How do you invest in layer two scaling solutions? Well, the first way, as some of you already know, is just by using the protocols. This is what we have seen in the past with DeFi projects such as DYDX, Uniswap, ENS, and others. These protocols in the beginning are more centralized, but the goal or the end goal is for them to decentralize and part of the tokens that they give out these tokens can be used as governance tokens to govern the future of the protocol. So when it comes to something like Arbitrum and Optimism, there is no mention or there has been no mention yet of a token. And just like everything else in the past, this is just speculation, right? Use the protocols just to use them and maybe you will be rewarded. Of course, right now, using these protocols could be pretty costly. So when it comes to these tokens though, in my opinion, right, my speculation, I do believe that one day, one of these, at least one of these will have a token because this is the way that crypto and DeFi is moving where eventually almost every protocol is gonna have their own token as they decentralize, as they give out a governance token. And let's say these protocols even do have a token. We don't know what will make someone eligible, right? Every other project that had an airdrop in the past was different. Some of them was just for using it. Some of them, it was doing a certain transaction. Others, it was doing a certain amount of, a certain transaction X amount of times. And also, even if they are going to have an airdrop, did the snapshot already happen, right? Did it happen in the past already? So even if someone goes ahead and interacts with these protocols, right? Deposits or bridges crypto back and forth, will they be eligible? We'll have to wait and see. And by the way, same thing over here with Arbitrum, just like Optimism. If you go to Uniswap, you can go ahead and change the network to Arbitrum and you can swap there as well. But when it comes to tokens for layer two scaling solutions, there is one that we do know about, and that is ZK Sync. Because if we go to their FAQ page, it asks, will there be a token? And they said, yes, but that's all they said. We don't know exactly how much they're going to give out, if they're going to give out. Usually they will, right? Even if protocols don't give out all the tokens through an airdrop, they'll give at least a portion and the rest may be through private sales, for example. So it is very likely that there will be an airdrop token for ZK Sync. 
Again, we don't know the details, we don't know the dates, we don't know how many tokens will be released. And when it comes to using ZK Sync, it's not the same at the moment as Arbitrum or Optimism. It asks, how do I swap tokens on ZK Sync? And the answer is, while it is possible to make swaps, currently there is no UI available for it. Paraswap, One Inch, and others will be providing ZK Sync liquidity solutions for projects that need liquidity providers. But what we could do on ZK Sync right now is we can deposit again, just like the other platforms, right? It will be pretty costly to deposit. So that's one thing we can do if maybe, who knows, this is what will make someone eligible for the airdrop. And the other is that we can play around with the test net. I retweeted this tweet on how to play around with the test net, which is free, right? So we just went over how you can bridge Ethereum from the main net, right, to ZK Sync. Who knows, maybe that will make someone eligible. But if you don't wanna put, you know, or pay that 40, 50, $80 gas fee, you can at least go ahead and get some free faucet tokens and swap them in the test net. And once you connect your wallet, you will see at the bottom request tokens from a faucet. You could go ahead, play around, swap it. Who knows, maybe this will be part of a future airdrop. Maybe yes, maybe no. Only one way to find out. So the first way is using the protocols. And then there are some of you that are watching saying, I don't wanna use these protocols. I just wanna trade the tokens when they come out. And when it comes to these types of tokens, eventually they make their way onto exchanges. But these types of tokens at first won't be on platforms such as Coinbase or Gemini. They will be a little more difficult to get. And when it comes to these tokens, what I've always said in the past, and I still say it until this day, if you don't own a token prior to it being launched on an exchange, it's probably a better idea to stay away the first or second day that it is trading, right? For the very first time. These are very volatile days and typically there is a big price decrease. For example, when it comes to Immutable X, the IMX token, this is what happened in the beginning. And just so you know, Immutable X airdropped IMX tokens to early users of the platform. And IMX, just like the other protocols in this video, is a layer two scaling solution. So when this token first launched, it was trading between six and $5. And I wanted to wait at least a day to make a video because I thought that it would likely go down. So I waited about a day and a half. And then when I made the video, the price of the token was about three, about $3, right? And this is a token that I believe in. It's a token or a platform that I believe in. And then since then, it went all the way up to currently $8.40. So when it comes to these new tokens, if you're not getting them airdropped, early on because you were an early user of the protocol, but you wanna wait instead to invest in them by buying them on exchanges, I would say just wait one or two days, let it settle. And you also might be wondering, okay, well, if it's not on Coinbase and it's not on Gemini, how do I actually get these tokens? Well, if you want to learn how to buy any single cryptocurrency, go ahead and watch this video link right above and in the description down below. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like the video and I'll see you next time.